right, so I wanted to start another video here to go over the room composite piece. In the room composite piece, you are creating a believable space, a three-dimensional believable space from images, from sources, from different places. Um, there's some examples in the Behance portfolio that you can go through and look at by um, finding my Behance link. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Photoshop and I'm going to start a piece. I've actually got one that um, is it in various stages of completion. I'm going to come back to this one, but I want to show you how I how I built the background to begin. So to build the background, the first thing I did is I found made sure that I found some vertical wood, not horizontal. It's got to be vertical because we're going to create a faux perspective here. So I'm going to take um, I'm going to take a few of these. I'm going to hold Alt or Option. And I'm going to duplicate this and I want to kind of run it across. If you hold shift, let me go back again. If you hold option and shift at the same time, then it keeps it um, in line. So even if I move my cursor up and down, it's still going to keep it in line. So I want to create a few instances, quite a few, and actually bigger than I'm actually, than the space I actually have here. So let me zoom out a little bit because I want to add one more. So option and shift, I'm using the Mac, so it's option and shift. Um, if it wasn't a Mac, if it, if it was a PC, that would be different. And again, option and shift. So now I've got a whole line of them here. Okay, I want to merge all these together. So I selected all these layers and I'm going to choose merge visible to make them one. All right, so I'm going to grab, oh, sorry, my bad, not merge visible, merge layers. <laughs> Merge visible, merge it in with the background as well. Okay, so now I've got this nice big shape. So what I want to do is I want to create some perspective here. So let me zoom in. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Edit, Transform, and I'm going to choose Perspective. And when I drag in this side, right, if I pull this side in, it's also going to pull the other side in as well. So essentially, things that are further from me are going to be closer together. So that's what I've got there. And I can pull the perspective out here too, right? So you notice how the floor is kind of coming towards us a little bit. I'm going to double click to apply that transformation. I can also now, if I hold shift, right, if I don't hold shift, shift then, the, then it keeps the proportions, but if I hold shift, it would take the proportions out and I can actually really, really take that floor and slip it onto the ground there, right, to kind of slip it onto the ground. So this is my floor. I'm double clicking here in the layer and that way it brings up the option that I can name that layer. So that's my floor. Um, I'm going to create a new layer now and this is going to be for the wall. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to take a selection tool the marquee selection tool to select a space that is going to be my wall color. Um, you could put a wallpaper in here or you could put anything in here. I'm going to pick like a, like a very light gray. Um, I'm going to put that in the back. You know, now I'm in this layer. I have this thing selected. Command delete will fill in a selection with a color. So now I've got a soft gray back there. So this is my wall. The next step here is to add some shadows, right? Um, because even if we're going to add a lighting effect to this piece, which we're going to do, we still want to have some shadows. So again, I'm going to take that marquee selection tool and I'm going to select that, um, the wall part. I'm going to grab my gradient tool. I'm going to make sure that I have black to white here. This is default black to white. I have black um, there and I'm going to go up to my gradient tool. The second option will always be foreground to transparent. So I'm going to choose that option. I have foreground to transparent. I want this um, gradient. I want the linear gradient and I'm going to drag up from the bottom to create kind of a shadowed part of the wall. Now if I hold shift when I do that, then I'll make sure that I don't get, you know, it doesn't go off to some direction. It is actually a straight line. The further you pull, the darker that will be. And what's nice about this being in its own layer, which is what I should have done. Let me go back, right? I just command Z, I went back. Let me create a new layer. Let me put that in a new layer, shift click. All right, now it's in its own layer, so I can experiment with the opacity, and I can even put a mode on it if I wanted to. All right, I'm actually going to duplicate this shadow, right? Command J is the keyboard shortcut to duplicate. I want to slide it down here and I'm going to take that layer. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to flip it onto the floor. Cause I want that same dark shadow where those two dark pieces meet. That'll be like the depth, the dark, the darkest depth of my room. Now, if you see like you've got like a little bit of a highlight in there, a little bit of light, that's probably because my, there you go. My gradient was not a hundred percent onto the, to the, to the piece right there. So now you've got that got a little bit of an edge here, but you get the idea. So that's kind of like the basis of starting the room. One other thing I want to show you in this tutorial is how to group things together. So if I take this little folder here and I call this the background, I could take all of these layers and slide them in the background. So when I go to my new document here, you're going to notice that I have folders here and they're going to be opened or, or closed depending on what I'm going to do. 
close that. I don't need that. Okay. So let me go. So this is the room that I started to build. It's a Toy Story room. It's almost like the real version of the Toy Story room. So part of your requirements here is you have to have some items on the wall. You have to have some items on the floor. Um, there need to be items um, on a table or a chair. Um, I will bring up that document that shows you what the requirements are, or you can find it um, in the distribution folder. But um, so you'll see here, so I've got my background. My background is already done, right? I did all those different pieces together. Um, I've got things that are on the wall. I've got things that are on the floor. And I've got things that are kind of in the room. So one of the things that I want you to add or include in this piece is a light. Where is the light coming from? So in this particular project, this particular image here, the light would not be coming from the window because the window, the, the, it's dark out there. I might have light coming from the window depending on your piece. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. So I'm going to do a layer that is above the lamp and this is going to be my light source. Now if we look at light sources, if we look at how light and shading work, um, you will notice that there is an area where the light is coming from, there is a shadow behind in the opposite direction from the light. The shadow can go from dark to light. There's a lot of different things in here that you can look at. We're not we're not getting into so much of the, you know, how how to shade something perfectly. We just want to give the illusion of depth here. So back to my image here. Um, let's go in. I want to take this polygonal lasso tool. This makes straight lines. I want to select the space that the light would be coming from. And again, light doesn't bend. I'm kind of making up this light, but um, think about if I was coming off from the edge of this, it would come straight out. Try to get as much of it as I can. Try to eyeball where this is going to go, and it would go back up to the light there. And then to finish the selection, make sure that little circle pops up and then I have a full shape. So now I've got my lighting effect. I'm going to grab, I'm going to flip white to the front now and I'm going to do that same gradient tool. And I have my own layer, created a layer for it. Same gradient tool, light, white to transparent, here it is. I'm going to take that same tool, I'm using linear still, and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag to drop that light into the room. Now, I just command D, deselected it. This light is fairly intense, right? I can lower the opacity of this light. Now that it's in its own layer, things that I can do with it, I can lower the opacity. I can put a mode on it. Maybe there's a mode in here. The soft lights, those work really well for the lighting effects here. I'm going to leave mine at normal because I want to mess with it a little bit more. And I can even blur. This is a very sharp light. I can go to filter and I can go to blur and I can choose Gaussian blur. That's the that's kind of like your standard blur. And if I blur out the edges just a little bit, like not too much because it is kind of a, a, a serious light. Um, that gives the illusion, right, that the light is coming out of the light there. Now, if my light's a little bit off, I probably could have had a little bit more of an angle here. But I, it, because it's completely editable, I can modify it. I can grab my transformation controls. I can grab it up for, for the demonstration's sake. I'm going to leave that where it's at. All right. Now that I have the light, I have to think about what, what is the light hitting and how does it affect some of these other things that are in the room here. For example, if I look at the inside of the shelf, right? Let me, let me take my polygonal lasso tool. The light would not go inside of the shelf. That would be bending inside the space. So I'm going to select this space right there. I'm still on the layer of the light. I'm going to hit delete. I want to get rid of that. The light would not go inside of the shelf. And actually, um, to be specific too, it would not go probably on the outside outskirts of this shelf either. Um, and I said to hold shift to keep things straight. So I'm holding shift here. And I could also have used the polygonal lasso tool for that as well. Okay, so that kind of cleans it out. I did miss a little corner right there, but this demonstration sake, right? Um, how about this little edge of the shelf? Likely you would not see it, so let me go ahead and get rid of that as well. And I probably would not have light underneath the shelf, right? Underneath the shelf. Right now I'm using a hard eraser, a hard brush. I'm going to switch to a soft brush, and I'm going to lower my opacity here because what I want to do is I kind of want to take this and I want to kind of remove it, but I want to do a soft remove of this, of this light here, right? So almost like it gives a, the illusion of a shadow underneath the shelf here, like where the light would not be getting if I zoom out. Kind of see how that's working there. Now, other things that this light would affect, right? What other things would this light affect? Now, let's say I had Woody, and Woody was inside the light here, right? Um, there's a few things that I can do with Woody. If he's inside the light, right? then I would, um, he could be behind it and then the light is affecting him. If he would be, oops, if he was, let's say he was, where's Woody? There's Woody. Turn off my light source so I can grab Woody. 
I'm turning it back on. Okay, there's Woody. Um, if I wanted him, if I look closely at him, you could see that the light is coming from this side of his body. Now, let's say I wanted to change that. How, how could I affect that or change that? Well, you know what? Actually, I could, if I hold shift, I can flip Woody into the other direction. I can also go to edit to transform, um, and that would be a, a more specific flip, actually. that I kind of eyeball that. I made him look a little big and go in a little bit. Let me double click on that. Now that light kind of makes more sense. It makes a little bit more sense. So you might want to look at things and figure out where, you know, where would the light hit? Where should the shadow go? Um, I'm going to add a shadow now to Woody. He's awfully big, but for demonstration, I'm going to leave him this large. Um, I'm going to double click to bring up my layer styles. I want to add a drop shadow to Woody. So I'm going to use full opacity. I don't want any distance, any of these things. Um, I am going to play in a minute with the drop shadow. Um, there is this thing called global light in the layer styles. If my light was coming from this direction, which it is, right, then the global light is clicked. Then when I pull out the distance, it's going to give me the shadow that would be opposite the light. Now, you can unclick this for certain things, but I'm actually using the shadow in a completely different way, so it doesn't even matter. The drop shadow is now attached to the layer of Woody, but I want to separate it. I'm going to go to the layer menu, and I'm going to choose layer style, and I'm going to choose create layer. From there, I created a separate layer that is now Woody's drop shadow. So I could take that sh that that layer, right, and I can take that shadow now. Let me zoom out a little bit because I need more space. I'm going to take that shadow and I'm going to bring it down in front of Woody because the light's coming from behind him. So if if he was actually in this space like that, then the, the light would be there. And the, because the light's hitting this way, then the shadow would prop look likely go this way. So I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to choose transform, and I'm going to go perspective. Not perspective. I'm sorry not perspective, edit, transform, I'm going to choose skew. And with skew, I can take these edges and I can pull it out. So I can take a shadow off into the side. Double click to apply it. If I wanted to, I'm going to shrink it up a little bit. It's a little bit too much. Um, and there you go. The, there's your shadow. Now the shadow's too dark. So I would go in, let me go play with opacity. You can also play with mode. And again, I would take that filter, that blur, I, I still haven't double click. There we go. Filter, blur, and the Gaussian blur to soften the edges of that shadow just a little bit. All right. So now we got a shadow and we have some light. Um, other things, how about like a drop shadow? Let's go to this bed. This bed is up against the wall. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create that drop shadow. I do want to use the global light, right? But the light is actually coming from this side now. Let me, if I pull it out, you'll see it. There it is right there. So really, there would probably be light hitting underneath the bed right there. So that's actually okay. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. I could, you know, I could play with the opacity here, so I don't have to do it once I go in there. And if you play with the size of the spread, this is essentially blurring it. You have more control when you separate the layer, but if you want to do it in that layer, you can. You're gonna have a lot of shadows and layers here. Okay, so I am going to, um, even though it is a drop shadow, I still want to layer layer style, um, create layer, separate that drop shadow because parts of this doesn't make sense, right? Let me zoom in. I know I'm getting specific here, but um, I think that's what makes these successful. So the edge, the very edge of that, oops, let me turn that back up. Let me get that hard brush. You're going to go back and forth between the hard and the soft quite a few times. Um, let me go in. I want to erase that edge. I don't want to see that edge. And I'm actually going to clean that up just a little bit like that. Something else you can do here for certain areas. Like let's say I want it to be, I want it to, I do want it to be darker underneath the bed. It's a little bit too light. Let me go back down into my background onto the wood floor. Let me open that up and let me find my wood floor. And I'm going to take the, there's two different things that I can do. I can, I'm going to actually create a layer because I don't want to do it on that layer right there. Um, I could take my burn tool. Sometimes this works. Sometimes the lighting is correct and it makes, and it looks right. Burn will make certain areas, light areas of the image darker. So if I take this burn tool and you can, if mine is soft, I have a, mid-range uh, exposure and make sure you're on the right layer. Actually, if I'm going to use the burn, it has to be on this layer. It has to be on the layer that it's on. And notice how I'm kind of darkening up underneath there. Now, it's bringing out a different color, so I don't like that. I'm not crazy about that. I'm going to go back to that layer that I had. I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm going to take black. I want a soft brush, a very soft brush, a very, very low opacity because I can build it up as I go. And I'm going to go, now this is going to be above the wood floor, right? but under the bed because the bed's in a separate layer and I'm just going to kind of do some, some lines in here to darken it up. It's surprising how successful you can be by just kind of painting in some shadows a little bit. Light's coming from here for the ball. I'm going to put a shadow in the dark area of the ball there. 
Now, other things that you can do, right? This ball is more like three-dimensional. It's bright colors, image adjustments. I'm going to have to come in here and play with, um, I want to take the brightness down on this ball, and I want to take the contrast down on that ball. The way that highlight is way too bright. Um, that's what it looked like. Right, and that's what I what I left it at. How about Woody? He's awfully white too. Image adjustments, brightness and contrast, just a little bit. Let's take him down just a little bit. Okay. All right. So as, as you continue to go, that's kind of the basis of it, right? So you're building lights, you're building shadows, um, certain things like the window here. So the window has a drop shadow on it already. If I double click on it, you can see that that drop shadow is there. Here's my drop shadow. It's got the global light. Let me change it because I, I did a different example of this before. Um, and now my shadow's there. If I pull the distance away, you can see it kind of starting to pop up there a little bit. Now certain things, this is right up against the wall. That's a harsh light. That's a harsh shadow. That's going to stay just that like that. All right. So I think that we're good. How about, how about the rug? The rug also has, let's put a drop shadow on that rug. Now, if I go to drop shadow, this is what I want to show you. If I'm on drop shadow and I got global light and the light's coming from above, right? It's going to use the same type of directional shadowing as the as the wall. So you can see I got light here and I've got light here. So unless you're separating the shadow, then you would not need to worry about separate. Um, you would not need to worry about moving that angle. You can leave that angle where it's at as long as those, those shadows are, are close up or are being shown close up. All right. So that shadow highlights perspective. Good luck. And um, I'm excited to see what you'll come up with. Thank you.